Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the KV-85 heavy tank. I hope you guys will enjoy the video and let's get going. To understand the KV-85 we need to start with its roots. The KV-1 heavy tank was used by the Soviet Union in the early days of World War II and it was better than anything Germany fielded at the time. There were downsides, but for its time it was a good tank because the anti-tank guns Germany used were generally ineffective against its armor. And the 76.2mm was able to penetrate a lot of tanks. They also made another version of the KV-1, which was called the KV-1S. This was a variant of the KV-1, with less armor and a smaller turret to gain some mobility. But over the course of the war, the KV-1 became obsolete being only able to penetrate enemy tanks at very close distances, if they were lucky. The Clement Voroshilov 85, also known as the KV-85 for the Object 239, was a temporary solution. They used the KV-1S chassis combined with the IS-85 turret, also known as the IS-1. And the main armament was the 85mm D5T gun, which was originally an anti-aircraft gun. This was all put together to have a tank which could deal with the German armor until the Joseph Stalin tanks were ready to be mass produced. Like I said before it had the 85mm, this was a pretty powerful gun for its time and had 60 shells on board. It was reloading in about 4 to 10 seconds, which truly depended on how capable the loader was. And the KV-85 was outfitted with 3 machine guns, all of these were the 7.62 DT machine guns. Production for this vehicle got off to a bad start when several mistakes on the blueprints were discovered. For example the telescopic sight was completely obstructed and the periscopic sight was for 15% obstructed. There were also issues with depression and elevation of the KV-85 and it didn't have any recoil guard installed. The KV-85 was produced a mere 148 times and this was partly due to the high demand of the 85mm D5T gun. They were in high demand because they needed them a lot, for example for the T-34-85 and also the SU-85, both needed this gun as well. The 85mm was powerful enough to penetrate the Panther and the Tiger frontally, which is what the Soviets needed at this time, but making this work on a tank is another story entirely. The main challenge was to get the larger third ring in the KV-1 as their chassis. Another issue was that the IS third ring was so heavy that when it fitted, the KV-85 was about as heavy as a normal KV-1 tank, and this made the tank slower again. The tank wasn't very well armored either. The hull was only 60mm thick and the frontal glaze was 75mm. Almost every German tank in service at the time could penetrate this. But its turret was of course better armored with a thickness of 110mm. An example of this would be a battle in Ukraine in 1943 where the 34 Guards Heavy Tank Regiment lost 7 of their 20 KV-85s to enemy fire from Panzer Force and Marder tanks. The next day, the German offensive was repulsed with no KV-85s lost. But this goes to show you even a tank with a 75mm L-48 was able to knock out the KV-85. Without an engine, you wouldn't be going anywhere. So the engine the KV-85 got was the V2K V12 diesel engine. This produced 600 horsepower and was able to push the 45 ton beast forwards. The KV-85 had a top speed of 40 km an hour and it had an operational range of 165 km. The KV-85 was a big tank, it was 2.8 meters high, almost 3.3 meters wide and 8.5 meters long. This allowed the tank to house up to 4 crew members in there and this for such a tank isn't out of the ordinary. These were the commander, the gunner, the loader and the driver. The issues with the KV-85 were mainly that when it reached the front line in October 1943, its armor was already outdated. This is because it had to face the formidable 75mm L-48 of the Panzer Aus G, the 75mm L-70 of the Panther, the 88mm L-56 of the Tiger I and the 88mm L-71 anti-tank gun. And of course this anti-tank gun was already mounted on some AFVs like the Nashorn and the Ferdinand which both debuted in the Battle of Kursk in July to August 1943. Another issue is that it wasn't produced in any large numbers, 148 isn't by far enough to influence the war in any way, and the KV-85 wasn't particularly fast in any way, 40 km an hour isn't remarkably fast even for a heavy tank. And even if its theoretical top speed is 40 km an hour, that doesn't mean they actually drive 40 km an hour with it. Because as the tank driver you don't want to damage any components of the tank while not in a combat situation. 
One of the few good things in my opinion was this main armor map, because you could take out every German tank and AFV from point blank range, for example maybe the Ferdinand. But the Ferdinand, like the KV-85, was only produced a mere 91 times. So seeing these two go head to head in a confrontation is first of all quite unlikely, and second I could not find any data suggesting they have had a confrontation. Anyways ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.